funny, I was saying to Catherine Lift, like, I haven't actually ever done a podcast about myself and my story. And you're usually asking the questions. I'm usually asking the questions and I like asking the questions. And I think I've like share what I want to about my story and I choose to to share it as, as positively as I can. But um and I have been on podcasts before, but talking about topics that I'm passionate about, like health and wellness and not you. Yeah, not me. And um, but actually I think I'm probably emotional because it's like they're happy tears I think and kind of great memories and I have had a very turbulent journey in golf because what happened after that after a lot of, a lot of effort was actually like heartbreaking for me um, with my injury tell, tell me you know tell me everything so I played at Ran for for a year and had a brilliant time and decided after that year that I really needed to play more golf if I was going to actually catch up with the girls who were at the top of the game and I was coming kind of from elite in one sport and trying to get elite in another sport so I was lucky to be offered a place down in Wentworth on a scholarship program um my within the year I was representing the county in Glasgow I played for Renfrewshire County and so my my performance had already been quite rapid like acceleration and I'd, my handicap had dropped quite quickly and nothing that no another field hockey player couldn't do by the way there's I'm yet to meet a field hockey player that's not a natural golfer and any field hockey players listening that want to play golf professionally you can do it like 100 percent. you'll have a like wicked slice for the first year that you play but after that you'll be epic at the game so I was just really like you know the bold one that was actually trying to do it but um, there is a lot of crossover in the sport so my performance had really accelerated fast and I'd been offered a place on this scholarship program down Wentworth and the premise was that I would be given some support from some of the best coaches in the world and we'd see if we could really do this and try and there was different sort of um motivations to the program my motivation was to be a professional golfer there was other motivations in there too some were one of them was to prove that you don't need 10,000 hours to become elite at something um the other was to prove that kids who grow up playing multi-sport rather than one sport can still be you know the best in the world at one sport and the third was probably to show that you know you can you can start golf late and be really good (laughs) But for me, it was to be a professional golfer. So off I went down to London with my bag and my clubs. And, you know, I, I knew no one down there at the time. So again, everyone's another moment of like my family, like what? You're like going, you're now dropping out of another university, which was St. Andrews. Um, and you're going to go on a train with nothing. And you're going to go down and just like play golf full time. Like, are you mental? And I was like, probably, but I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. So off I went and I had some of the best coaches in the world put around me. I went down having played golf for just over a year and a year later my handicap was plus three and I played for the county down in England. How, how, um, from, from day one to plus three, how many days? Um, in total it'd been about four years. Okay. So. That's, that's very good. That's like eight strokes a year. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) it was, it was four years by the time I turned pro and the, to plus three, it probably been, I think, yeah, maybe three years. That's incredible. So it was a lot of golf in that, in those three years. Three though. years to plus three. Mm. Is that going to be the title of your book? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. 10,000 hours. Not for me. <laughs> yeah. So sorry, keep going. So off I went on this program and it was, yeah, very intense, but my like performance and golf was really on the rise. And I thought, you know, I can do this. Like, okay, I think I could maybe do this. And in the end of the first year of training full time with these coaches, I'd started to develop this little niggle in my wrist. And of course you have niggles all the time in your body. So I ignored it for a while. And then eventually I couldn't I'd have never it. heard that term. Just, <laughs> just got to point that out. Niggle? Niggle. That is... Like a little niggle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, got it. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Oh, it's just a little... Oh, it's a little... Got it. You know, like a little something in the body that's like 
a little bit unhappy, you know, maybe a little niggle in the knee. That's... <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if this word exists in, in American English. There isn't really another word for it. Like Nag, a, a twinge. Nagging, yeah, a twinge. twinge. Yeah. Good, Simon. Twinge or a tweak or a yeah. niggle. Niggle. Yeah. Well. Okay. So I had one of those yeah. in the wrist and you often ignore niggles because they usually go away and <laughs> <laughs> this one didn't and actually it just got worse and I tried to, to play through it because by that point, you know, the real, the the ball was in motion, the train was running and it was like, I was going to turn pro and this is the next stage and it's really exciting and a lot of people had given me a lot of time and a lot of their energy and effort and I guess... I didn't want to let them down. I didn't want to let myself down. And so I just kind of tried to carry on. And that was really the biggest mistake of it all. And unfortunately, the wrist injury just got bad to worse. And I had multiple operations and treatments. And unfortunately, it's, it's still the same today. So um, my desire to make it as a professional golfer was stopped. Wrist injury is more common than than one might think. Very common, yeah. In golf. Very common. Yeah. Men and women, but I think more in the women's game, it's it's common. How do you feel about the niggle turning into a, a serious life uh, you know, departure or whatever you want to call it? It's been an emotional journey. You know, I think that a lot of it's in that emotion that I feel right now because I, I think back to Ran Furley and how how happy I was and then what happened after that. And it it does make me very emotional 